Here in the village of Guara Guara, the waiting room at the medical center is overcrowded. 14-year-old Musa Armando and his mother are among those who have been waiting here for hours. My head always feels so hot in the night. I lost my appetite. My legs feel heavy, as if there's hardly any blood flowing through them. Musa's village was destroyed when Cyclone Idai tore through the area, flattening most buildings and destroying them in the subsequent flooding. Even the medical center was damaged by a falling tree. The force of nature and the destruction are still visible all over Guara Guara. But while the reconstruction is continuing, there is a major concern right now, diseases and in particular malaria. Some parts of the region are still submerged, providing ideal breeding conditions for mosquitoes. Musa and his mother have had to sleep in the open with no protections against the insects since their home was destroyed. We don't have any mosquito nets. Ours were swept away in the floods along with our whole house. No one has given us new nets. Finally, it's Musa's turn to see the doctor, the only one at this clinic. And Musa's fears are confirmed he has malaria. Like so many others of the patients seen here by Dr. Candido Arthur in recent weeks. Following the cyclone, the number of malaria and diarrhea cases has increased compared to previous months. I think some areas are still waterlogged after the cyclone and the floods. That's where the mosquitoes breed. We need to launch a campaign to stop the mosquitoes from spreading. Musa's mother receives the medicine he needs in exchange for a symbolic fee of one cent. A good thing, since that's just about all she can afford to pay. Now she can only hope that the drugs work and that she and Musa will soon have a roof as well as mosquito nets over their heads. Joining me now is scientist uh, Elena Levashina from the Max Planck Institute for Infection Biology. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Levashina. Now, malaria is a disease that was once on the decline, but it's making a comeback. What explains this? The uh, short answer to this question is we are not really sure. It came as a surprise because there were really massive efforts to maintain a disease through distribution of uh, insecticide-treated nets and uh, drug treatments. And we believe it reflects one of these uh, usual cycles of malaria uh, distribution. And uh, we have to understand the factors which drive malaria. Uh, and that's an attempt you're making in, uh, to do in the lab itself. But you've also been out in the field in Africa. Now, a, a new anti-malaria vaccination campaign is being launched in some African countries. It's being described as a breakthrough. Tell us about this pilot project. This is really an exciting time and really it is a historic week because that's for the first time ever we have launched malaria vaccination campaign in three countries in Africa. And it is a nationwide campaign. So all kids will be vaccinated with this vaccine. Now, this vaccine is not yet the dream product. It does not prevent infection, but it prevents the death of the kids. And if we can buy even half the number of kids who are dying from malaria, I think it's really very, very important. Now, how, uh, um, are there any downsides to this vaccination? How affordable is it for people? Because as we saw in our report, many of the people who are affected by this disease are in fairly kind of uh, weak financial uh, situations. I think these uh, uh, first campaigns are fully supported by the governments of the countries who are engaged into this process and also by numerous foundations who give money to pay for these vaccines. These campaigns also will help us to understand better how to create new, more potent vaccines to prevent infections at all. So you're optimistic about this pilot project. And what about other techniques um, out there in the scientific world to, to cope with malaria? Because it affects large parts of the world in Asia, in Africa and South America. That's absolutely true. And I think, again, I'm very optimistic. And I think we are living in exciting times because at different angles, there are multiple tools now which are being developed to stop malaria, speaking about uh, mosquito control through gene drives, applications which are not yet ready for application, but will be there soon, and development of new powerful vaccines. 
Right. Uh, Dr. Uh, Elena Levashima from the Max Black Institute, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us.